Myers Park negates resolve the United States federal government should ban the collection of personal data through biometric recognition technology. Our first observation is you should prefer the status quo because of regulations. Justin from last month finds the numerous state legislators have introduced biometric data privacy laws requiring the individuals and entities covered to use a reasonable standard of care to protect biometric data. The TH or the THSH 21 furthers in the next few years additional states and federal government will adopt laws for regulation. It is unnecessary to implement a blanket ban on life-saving technology and instead we should focus on maximizing the benefits and limiting the harms through strategic legislation. That being said, contention one is trafficking. UNICEF 23 writes, the United States is one of the top destination points for victims of trafficking. Biometrics are solving as Parker 20 writes that facial recognition helps investigators narrow searches for suspects quickly. The technology serves as a tool to assist human analysis in identifying matching photos from a database. Miller 13 writes, biometric technologies introduced or include fingerprinting, iris recognition, and facial scanning and can make it more difficult to produce counterfeit travel documents. Such measures proven valuable to combat transnational or transnational trafficking. WC writes that 27% of trafficking victims of children, meaning we need to continuously collect data for facial recognition to locate these victims. Parker 20 writes that facial recognition has been, able to be, been used to, in 40,000 cases in North America, helping rescue 15,000 children and identify 17,000 traffickers. Contingent to healthcare is biometrics is integral to the functional system, functional healthcare system for two reasons. First is emergency, the credit 15 writes, in emergency situations where patients may be unconscious or unable to communicate, biometric identification can quickly and accurately identify the patient and their medical history, allowing healthcare providers to make informed decisions about treatment options. This can be especially critical in situations where patients have allergies or other conditions that require specific treatment protocols. Diamond 16 quantifies in emergency situations, 250,000 Americans die each year due to mis misdiagnoses. Second is patient identification. Patient misidentification is a pervasive problem in healthcare. As we 22 writes, Americans often have multiple electronic health records. Healthcare providers must match those files to get a complete picture of the patient's health history, but errors in matching records to the correct patient occur up to half of the time. According to a 2012 survey, nearly one in five hospital chief information officers indicated that patients at their hospitals have been harmed in the previous year because of these record mismatches. This is because in privileged rights, traditional patient misidentify or identifiers such as social security numbers and patient addresses can be easily mistyped and cause preventable medical errors. For example, page 22 reports one Houston area health system alone documented 130,000 cases where two or more patients share the same birthday and first and last name. Luckily, biometric soft duplicates and misidentification because they are unique. Fab 22 writes current identifiers like addresses change, but biometric markers are unique to each individual. Healthcare can use biometrics to confirm identities, eliminating duplicate medical records, and improving data, data accuracy overall. Right now, healthcare is adopting biometrics, a trend which will increase time. So, we get 18 mentions hospitals and clinics have implemented these basic biometrics, and advances to the tech will also make them more attractive to healthcare. Other technologies like AI will also boost biometrics. This is key to saving lives. The improvement of vaccine rights, traditional patient identifiers cause preventable medical errors. Uh, and preventable medical errors are the third leading cause of death in the U.S., causing 440,000 deaths per year. Fortunately, biometrics are key to saving lives. As early vaccine rights, the use of biometrics could reduce the consequences of patient misidentification. 50% of all deaths could be eliminated with such technology. Voting app bans the natural increase, which ensures that hundreds of thousands will continue to die from misidentification. Contention three is terror. Traditional identification measures er, fail to prevent attacks. Barbara 16 says the, the ability to falsify identities is a major weakness in U.S. kind of terror. A credible ID lead lets terrorists avoid intelligence agency and six of the 19 terrorists in 9-11 and use fake ID. Biometric solve. Woodward 1 says a fingerprint would make it difficult for someone to assume another's identity. Facial recognition is used in search against a watch list of a suspected terrorist. Efforts are paying off. As empirically, DJ21 says the US biometric data contributed to the capture of 1,700 people. 9 11 proves as biometrics would have stopped Al Qaeda in their tracks. According to Feinstein 1, two of the hijackers' authorities had pictures of the suspects, but cameras did not use biometrics. Experts believe biometrics could have forestalled the September 11 attack. Stopping large scale attack is crucial, as for example, the risk of terrorists using bioweapons is high. Dunnally 22 writes that the threat of biological weapons used by terrorists is entering an era of heightened risk. Advances in technology make biological weapons manufacturing accessible to the lethal lethality greater. Coronavirus showed how devastating disease outbreaks can be. Use of bioweapons carry the largest source of extinction. As Schmitz 18 mentioned, biological weapons are the most powerful weapons that can be, be created. Bring in bioweapons and you can imagine extinction, of, you can imagine the extinction of the human species. There, for these reasons, we are proud to negate the resolution. Anthony and I affirm the resolution. Our framework for this round is that you must prioritize minorities when casting your ballot. Minorities are ignored in policy. As Lodardi 17 confirms, 97% of all Republican elected officials are white, and of all Democratic elected officials, 79% are white. Uh, our first contention is incarceration. Alexander 10 explains that mass incarceration turns people of color into second-class citizens. Once labeled a felon, housing discrimination and denial of voting is legal. So surveillance tech enables precise discrimination as law enforcement makes predictive decisions around marginalized populations. It's cynical. McDonald 20 explains that researchers build tech, sell it to police, and police use it to justify arrests. Finally, the mugshots are used to improve algorithms. A ban is needed. Cyril 20 explains that surveillance drives brutal policing. Prohibiting police access is required to defend Black lives in the 21st century. Biometrics must go.
The impact is twofold. First, Proxia 11 writes that each year 176,000 Americans die as a result of racial segregation. Second is extinction. Maribel finalizes that peace between superpowers is linked to social justice and racial inequality, contributing to militarism and setting the ideological base for World War III. If Black America remains isolated, the result may be the termination of humanity. Our second contention is deportation. ICE relies on biometric. Uh, ICE re relies on biometrics. Pittman 11 explains that fingerprints are sent through a system where it is checked against biometric immigration records. Lanceman 22 uh, explains that since the program's activation, 72,000 people were deported. IDP 22 confirms that biometrics uh, started to collect data on 270 million people without consent to target immigrants for raids and deportation with no oversight or accountability mechanisms. This has two effects. First is agriculture. Jordan 21 quantifies that 11 million undocumented immigrants live in the United States, accounting for 5% of the workforce. Force. Forward 22 writes that undocumented immigrants make up 50% of the farm force. Without them, millions of pounds of food would go unharvested. Forcing them to leave would be devastating on our food supply, and prices would double. Agriculture output would fall by nearly uh, $60 billion. 56% of farmers were unable to find work before COVID, finalizing that now the importance of undocumented workers has never been clearer. American price spikes ripple globally. Crib 19 explains that the U.S. is the world's largest food export and has a disproportionate effect on the world's food price. Crib 22 explains that food is the primary driver of modern conflict. Hunger uh, snowballs into government failure, civil wars, and refugees. Regions are at high risk for food failure and conflict ranging from riots to nuclear war. Star 15 finalizes that a nuclear war would create an environment too cold for food to grow and humans would vanish forever. The AFBF confirms that 2 million farms dot America and one U.S. farm feeds 166 uh, people annually. By that mark, American agriculture feeds 332 million people globally. The Thus, losing 50% of the workforce could put 166 million people into food insecurity. Food insecurity is devastating. NHD 21 states food insecurity means increased risk for diabetes and heart disease. Room 21 quantifies that 6.7 million people die from diabetes in, the, in 2021 in the United States. And NYS 22 finalizes that 697,000 people have died of heart disease in the United States every year, one in every five deaths. Second is construction. CMS 22 confirms that 41% of the construction workforce was undocumented. These workers are needed, as BYF confirms that the construction industry will be short of 2 million craft professionals by 2025. Contention three is techno-authoritarianism. Democracy is in free fall. Walsh 21 confirms that the world is in a democratic recession with democracies worsening in 73 countries. The US and its allies were responsible for an outsized share. Beijing has filled in. Benjamin 18 explains that China is exporting facial recognition to leaders on the fence about democratic norms. Authoritarians in Hungary, uh, Turkey, Egypt, or Rwanda will crush dissent in ways that weaken democracy globally. America is following suit. NAS 23 confirms that China leads the world in exporting facial recognition. There's bipartisan interest in restricting tech, but the U.S. is the second largest exporter of facial recognition technology, undermining the idea that America embodies democracy. A ban is key. Hartzog 18 writes that facial recognition is perfectly suited for authoritarian control and the most dangerous surveillance mechanism ever invented. Cartagene uh, 15 explains that all technocrats enforce conformity controlled by surveillance that tracks people's thoughts, behaviors, and relationships. This is impossible without biometrics, but with it, it's reality. Technofascism leads to infinite suffering. Modernity 20 concludes that suffering will exceed all that has existed on Earth so far. A long future under a brutal totalitarian state could be worse than extinction. Global stability is at stake. Diamond 19 writes that in the 30s, implosion of democracy led to a world war. If the erosion continues, we may reach a point where democracy goes bankrupt, plunging the world into an aggression not seen since World War II. Thus, we affirm the resolution. All right, time we get my first word. So, wait, on your like third contention of democracy, would you not agree that when the US gets rid of biometric tech, other countries won't either too, because it's kind of a role model? Uh, that other countries will as well? Yes. Yes, we would agree with that. And we're saying that exporting facial recognition technology is, that, that's, that's the key point of ours. We're saying exporting that is exporting authoritarianism. And by stopping itself and other countries from exporting that, the United States is going to be replacing that with democratic norms. Can I ask a question? Sure. Okay, so on your first contention, you talk about uh, trafficking. How much will trafficking actually help? Because the United States rank, uh, has one of the worst countries in the world for human trafficking with an estimated 199,000 incidents occur occurring annually. How much is uh, biometrics gonna help with that? Right, so that's where we mentioned the specific like um, statistics in our case when we're like mentioning 15,000 children have been saved and 17,000 of these traffickers have been caught because explicitly of biometric technology. Uh, what's the time frame on that? Time period? Um, yep. that should be from 2022, but I can check for you if you'd like. Uh, it, just like in the year. Oh, okay. Years. Yeah. Um, from like, I believe since like the, yeah, since 2022, like, um, and before that, that should be the statistic, but I can check that for you if you'd like. Got it. Okay. Um, so on, let's see. Uh, okay. So incarceration, you like link into, I believe it's like some sort of like war. How is war going to break out from incarceration? 
Okay, so uh, we have evidence from Maribel finalizing that peace between superpowers is linked to social justice and racial equality. That's a quote, we can send you that card if you need it, but we're saying that, that, that that's what the peace between superpowers is linked by and that the- Okay, can uh, I ask a follow-up question? Yeah. So why would biotech, like if it's like banned, for example, why would that solve all of that? Because that seems like it's linked to other stuff besides biotechnology. Because uh, wh why would banning it solve that? Because, because, uh, like we tell you before, biometrics are increasing the racism inside of America. Can I okay, ask wait, okay, yeah, you can ask a question. Okay, thank you. Uh, so on your second contention, who, uh, who, like, uh, what's your source? Like, uh, what source says that biometrics is best for healthcare? Because the NCBI says that uh, if nurses, doctors, and resident members were trained adequately to make sure uh, to differentiate between patients of the same name, medical error could be avoided. Like, what is the source that says biometrics is by far the best for healthcare? So biometrics is the best because it allows for these identifiers when they can't identify for themselves or they have to like match and then like the um for what's, example, the like nurse, what's the source do you want the card uh yeah can yeah can, uh, can you just okay, give me can, a, can i send that after cross is that okay yeah of course sorry you were cutting out <laughs> yeah you can ask questions. Uh, i'm sorry i'm sorry um okay can i ask the last question real quick so you said how we should sort like deportation you mentioned because like of these like agriculture but you mentioned how only that's 50 percent of the workforce so why are we going to go actually let me ask you a different question why um would you not agree that the reason that some people aren't getting food is because of misdistribution and not because there's not enough food uh i would i would agree with that but losing 50 percent of the farm workforce in the country that exports the most amount of food is going to is going to just make that is just going to exacerbate that problem even further and kill more people does that answer your question yep i believe that's cross um perfect time will start now on their framing they don't actually contextualize any part of that they just say they're not represented in policy and then give stats about which percentage of them are policymakers. but we would say that activism group movements right now are increasing uh, like the ability and like you know ability for people to solve for minorities but it doesn't matter we link in with all three contentions first with trafficking most trafficking victims are poc whitney says that ethnic minorities and indigenous groups are at higher risk of human trafficking than other demographic groups second is healthcare poc and undocumented immigrants are less likely to have traditional identifiers like social security numbers so we link in by giving them access to healthcare. there is terror successful terror attacks increased racist attacks against muslim and extinction means everyone's dead, including all minorities. We link them with all three. Go to their case proper, starting with incarceration. A, at the top, it's not unique. The problem's getting better, so biometrics aren't making it worse than the status quo. Humphrey 21 finds since 2000, the rate of being jailed declined 22% among African-Americans. But then turn it, biometrics can, can reduce mass incarceration. Humphrey's further, newer technology can be used. It can be a step in the right direction to resolve unequal and unfair sentencing of black individuals in the United States. That's why we're using biometrics right now to exonerate people. On mass surveillance though, first turn because digital surveillance makes reform far easier. Simon 14 explains because surveillance is electronic, it's far easier to investigate its efficacy and enable protests in the case of abuse. This is far less possible traditional surveillance means electronic surveillance is continually improving their evidence half of it doesn't even specify biometric surveillance so we would say that moving to biometrics is a step in the future but then turn again because mass surveillance is less discriminatory than all the alternatives Haji Methu 14 explains untargeted surveillance like blanket screening neither singles people out nor conveys suspicion stigmatizing none in particular plus if we're already developing our systems to be more accurate then it doesn't actually matter we're not we're not misidentifying people and we're also not mass incarcerating people with it because it leads a, dig a digital trail of following police which increases accountability which overall improves the systems they don't actually do anything to improve the police systems by reducing a technology which has been shown to improve their accountability. On deportations, at the top, deportations are plummeting, so it's not unique. Zicarelli on Tuesday writes, Biden's 2024 budget re reveals ICE targets are continuing to plummet, a 76% decrease from 2017 to 2021. This is analytic. All their 72,000 deportations, none of them are biometric-based. We've only seen 400 based biometric-based deportations. That's at the bottom. Villa 21 says, in 2017, ICE used technology to locate and arrest only 400 people. So their evidence is just basically mishandling the amount of deportations that happen. But then go back to the top, dealing because new guidelines mean deportations only target suspected terrorists. Constantino 21 finds immigration officers can no longer deport people because they are undocumented. New guidelines focus on the deportation to suspects of terrorism or espionage. That solves back for all of their impacts since we can only deport certain people if they're suspected for terrorism. We're not deporting farmers or construction workers, but not unique anyway because ICE uses other sources. Funk 19 writes, ICE sets up terabytes of information from government, data brokers, and social networks. It piggybacks on software agreements using bits of info together, meaning we don't need biometrics. But then turn because surveillance replaces detainment. Jenkins 19 writes, the U.S. is planning to use biometric tech to treat migrants working mainly by using tech to supervise them without detaining them. Turn again because Farage 11 writes, biometrics afford refugees and asylum seekers a credible means of establishing their identity even when they lack other documentation. Thomas 05 adds, biometrics reduce discrimination by automatically identifying checks and raising confidence in immigration, reducing the stereotypes associated with migrants and asylum seekers. That means we solve for the structural issues migrants face in the long term. But then turn finally, because Farage 11 writes, biometrics have been used to more accurately identify populations and deliver aid to those who need it most. Prefer some scope, since we help the health of all immigrants while biometric related deportations only affect a tiny subset. And then cross apply, basically, this last turn's cross apply, basically a cross application of C1. ICE is using FRT to rescue children from sexual abuse. They have rescued 1,170 children in 2022. Prefer because sexual abuse causes long-term trauma and mental health issues for children, especially since deportations are so low.
And then on World Hunger, just like one piece of impact defense, World Hunger, it's not a production issue. They can see this across. According to Eminem, the World Hunger problem is an issue of bad distribution and food waste rather than uh, hunger production. Cut the card there. Good authoritarianism on backsliding, which is their uniqueness. Moza Body 22 finds the reason for backsliding is the pandemic. Uniquely, uniquely biometric solves since none 22 finds biometrics have assisted in contact tracing and containing the spread of the virus. But then di democracy isn't on his last slides. Collinson 23 explains that 2022 was the year democracy bounced back worldwide. Third, democracy gets stronger under Biden. WH23 corroborates Biden to continues to strengthen democratic resilience. Cut it there. Fourth, if anything, banning the US from banning by from using biometric surveillance gives China and Russia a monopoly over their surveillance, which would increase authoritarianism in two ways. A, there's more links between developing countries and authoritarian regimes. B, there's no regulation about, around biometric surveillance because in an app world, only the US would ban them, fundamentally decreasing regulations from the free world. Fifth, a non-unique because we're, we're currently living in a world with biometric surveillance, yet none of their impacts have occurred. Sure, it could happen in a country with authoritarian origins, but the resolution refers to just the US, so banning would have no effect on authoritarianism. Sixth, uh, no link. We, have, we still have checks and balances, meaning the Supreme Court, presidency, and Congress would all have to agree in a public manner something is incredibly unlikely. Also, they don't tell you where the democratic backsliding even happens. There's no contextualization. It's just going to be like responding to the incarceration deportation stuff and then um, responding to the case. Okay, sounds good. Everybody ready? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So time will start with my first word if everybody's ready. Okay. For they say that incarceration is non-unique and that the problem is getting better, that doesn't even matter. It, they cite since 2000 and biometrics were only starting to be used very recently, so that doesn't matter. Next, they say that biometrics can reduce mass incarceration. That's ignoring what we tell you in case where we tell you it's cyclical. It's fed more incarcerated people who are mostly minorities because of the AI's bias that makes the AI even more biased. Even if it can be solved, there's no motivation to solve it, so it won't be solved. Then they try to say that mass surveillance is good because it'll like enable uh, like protest in case of the abuse, but that doesn't matter. Even if it can be better, it can be worse as well. That's what's more likely to happen. Next, they say that it's less discriminatory than all the alternatives. The alternatives are counter plans. They can't even use that. Next, they try to say that deportations are plotting. That was before, that's from 2017 to 2021, before the Heart Initiative was enacted to uh, catch deportations for 270 million people. Then they try to say that like it's only targeting suspected terrorists, but that isn't happening with heart production it, with the Heart Initiative. And then they try to say that like ICE is using other sources. That doesn't even matter. The biometrics are what's supporting people. Then they try to turn it because surveillance replaces detainment, and that they're like treating migrants more humanely. It doesn't matter if they're treating be, being treated humane if they're being deported. Next, they try to tor turn it because like it affords refugees and asylum seekers even if they were allowing them into the country we're still going to end up deporting them it takes one step forward and takes two steps back then they try to turn it because it's like uh accurately identifying populations and delivering aid that's not even related to undocumented immigrants independent offices don't evaluate it then they try to say that it's like rescuing children from sexual abuse it's not related to undocumented immigrants once again it's evaluated then they try to say that like deportations are low but that doesn't even matter that's from 2021 it's before the heart initiative started then they try to say that world production is not a hunger issue but right now it's not a hunger issue if we deport those people then it will become a hunger issue Issue. Let's go on to their case. First of all, we prereq the construction industry, prereq everything in order for any of their impact, whether it be trafficking or medical. And you need to put people to build jails and hospitals says you have to vote for us. On the first observation, they say it's unnecessary to implement a ban, but anything else is a counterplay, which is legal in PF. Then on human trafficking, first of all, when you look at the big picture, they haven't accomplished anything. The U.S. has an estimated 199,000 incidents occurring annually. They'd only caught 15 aren't solving for anything. Meanwhile, they can't even uh, expand solvent and solvency the worldwide. DOJ confirms they traffic, they prey upon vulnerable individuals, including child and the child welfare system, homeless youth, unaccompanied children. These people aren't going to have jobs. They aren't going to have background checks. Therefore, they aren't going to have their biometric capture. So be able to expand it worldwide. Then you realize that they need to have their fingerprints, which is really unlikely because ABC News reports criminals alter their fingerprints by burning fingerprints on the stove. Thus, they aren't going to be able to capture them. But no matter what they're going to be do, they can turn the argument because then they're going to do that to the to the victims, which is really really bad. But then you can turn it again because facial recognition is really biased. It misidentifies people of color a third of the time, so you don't even know if they caught, caught the right people. Now let's go to medical error. On the first sub point, the mis impact of misdiagnosis doesn't make sense. It, it, like being able to identify someone doesn't help you get the tech to identify diseases. And there are just two hundred fifty thousand people who were misdiagnosed who died, but that wasn't the cause, even if they would still have to pay for treatment, which is really expensive. It doesn't matter if I know I have cancer or I can't get treatment from it. Healthcare error can be prevented in other ways. For example, if nurses, doctors, and residency members are trained adequately to make sure differentiated patients do the same name, the medical error could be solved. Infection prevention rates, name assigned, identity, ID number, date of birth, phone number, social security number, address, all of these can solve. And when you use multiple of them, they just say that like you can mistype them, but we have more training for that. Also, there's more consequences. It can have malicious consequences because biometrics, you can't reverse once it's stolen. Now let's go on to terror. First return. M1221 confirms the Taliban was able to steal U.S. biometric by coalition forces. Roy 21 further says the Taliban used used by American biometric data to put Afghans in, in, who held America on a kill list. This is massive consequences. Jordan 21 finalizes 300,000 Afghans have been involved with the U.S. now trapped in Afghanistan. That always because they don't give you any concrete numbers what we do, but we can already stop terrorists in the Netherlands government 
You can stop government terrorism by being, being vigilant in public spaces and reporting suspicious situations. Meanwhile, you can stop terrorism without biometric surveys and a reason to negate, but also we link it because biometric tracks, uh, supposed terrorist tracks undocumented immigrants. Uh, Thomas Five, um, they. Uh, certain nationals and ethnic groups deliberately targeted by immigration controls because of immigration fields the very act of collecting biometrics the stigma of criminal activity uh, it must be a traumatic and terrifying experience entitlement cards they have little evidence from the uk us and uk that biometric tech has contributed to reducing terrorism but no empirical analysis they cite 9 11 that the tsa got, gotten why better so it's not applicable they just say they caught 1700 people that is far away by the number of terrorists that we actually have and they have no impact because they don't explain how terrorists can get bioweapons and they don't explain how terrorists can release pathogens so thus they have no impact on the final contention wow. Okay, cool. So you kept talking about how alternatives to like the alternatives you bring up are counter. Wait, hold on. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, we have like a Sorry, we have like an echo here. Noah, can you mute? Okay, keep going. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, define counter plan. Define counter plan? Mm -hmm. An alternative to the resolution. Your alternative to the resolution is like these like partial bans or like restrictions instead of banning it, which isn't what the resolution asks no. for. Our alternative, our, our tone, uh, let me clear this up because this is pretty important because counter plans are against PF rules. Our alternative to the resolution is the status quo, which is how a fiat resolution works. So if we don't ban biometrics, we keep the status quo. The status quo, the status quo has regulations. We're not proposing that regulations should be implemented everywhere. We're not saying when you vote for us, that happens. It's not a fiat thing. We're just saying that right now, regulations exist and they're occurring and so you can like the, not banning biometrics means that that happens does that make sense yeah, but even then we we would say that the only way that you can solve for our impacts is a full ban of biometric tech but can i take yeah, a question so, please yeah you can have a question okay sure so let's talk about this like terrorism contention right mm -hmm. so um like how many people are you impacting with this terrorism contention um the whole world because we permit extinction Okay, so you're impacting to extinction with like nuclear war and pathogens. Do terrorists know, have biological weapons and do terrorists have the capacity to release mm -hmm. pathogens? Gotcha. Great question. So it's not nuclear war, it's bioterror. And the you, the uniqueness is that as we increase innovation and as we continue to develop biometric technology, leaks are more likely to the private sector, which is historically what has happened with when we develop conventional weapons like laws. And so we don't want to, pro like, oh, sorry. Um, And, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. No, 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 I got mixed up there. Sorry. The empirical analysis is that we're stopping terrorism in their tracks before it can start. That's why we stopped 1,700 people before they committed large-scale attacks. And that's also why our evidence says we could have stopped 9-11 if we had biometric recognition technology. Yeah, but like, how? so how is terrorism causing extinction? Can you just re-explain that link? Yeah, sure. So terrorists, when we continue to um, allow them to have access to things like, you know, large scale infrastructure, health labs, things like that. When we ban biometrics, which are a safer form of encryption, then they have like a chance of getting access to a bioweapon, but that bioweapon then like is used, which causes extinction because I mean, it's not hard to know. Okay. How the pathogens are so have like terrorists extinct. ever, ever gotten access to a bioweapon ever? No, because they're new. They, I mean, nuclear weapons have been around since like the 1940s. Yeah. And yeah. we have so like pretty good safeguards on nuclear weapons. We don't have safeguards on bioterror. But if like if we're talking about extinction here, I really don't understand how your like first C one of incarceration leads to extinction. Like, could you, can you just contextualize how um you know racial differences cause extinction? So our memorable evidence tells us that peace between superpowers requires social justice. When you have social injustice, that's what drives uh, differences between superpowers. That's what sets the ideological basis for World War Three. Okay, so there's three superpowers. And I would say that the other two besides the US are pretty bad about racial justice. So why do we need to be the one to fix it before we all cause each other to go extinct? Wait, can you rephrase your question? Yeah, oh. so the other superpowers are China and Russia, which are yeah. much worse about racial justice than the US is. So if we're already better, what is us improving it even more prevent for extinction? Because China and the, and Russia are, are would probably be against what we're doing and fight against it. That's why we would say, that's why we would say that setting the ideological basis for World War III would be really, really bad. But okay, also so they're, really against, they're against racial justice and your argument is improving racial justice. So you're saying that if they're against racial justice and we improve it, then they attack. Isn't that bad for you? Wait, what? Yeah, you just really... told me that they, they don't like what we're doing because we're, we're better with racial justice, right? Yeah. I don't really yeah, understand so what we, you're trying to fit me into saying here. What I'm saying is that <laughs> if banning biometrics improves racial justice and superpowers attack each other because of discrepancies in racial justice, doesn't that mean we would be more likely to be attacked? No, what we're saying is that under, well, I mean, that's overcross anyways, I think. You but, can answer, but yeah, we are overcross. Yeah, no, I, I think it's good. Okay, all right. Um, Let me just give a quick off-time roadmap. So I'm going to begin in my case.
and then I'll go over to their case and outweigh for as long as possible at the very end. So, yep. Let me get my timer set up. And give me one quick sec to get my doc, and we're good. Okay. So, I'm going to begin my first word. So, Judge, here is where we're going to look on our case. First of all, on trafficking, we still solve for a large amount of these trafficking numbers. For example, in our case, we literally mentioned how because we're able to solve these 15,000 children, identify 17,000 traffickers, the only response they have to this is like, okay, well, it's not 100% of the traffickers. So what? We're still making efforts and ballot efforts to solve these trafficking issues. And that's why also as well, when the U.S. is able to make these trafficking, um, make these uh, efforts to stop in trafficking, other countries will also as well, therefore causing a global effect on a global stop on uh, trafficking. And then that's one of the biggest impacts in the round, so therefore it has high significance. Now, moving on to healthcare, again, that's still 50% of the deaths that we're running. That's 220,000, and there's no incentive. They don't mention, our opponents don't mention a single incentive for these hackers to actually hack these healthcares. So therefore, that's why they're implementing them in the status quo. They're being implemented right now. That's not a counterplan. It's happening right now in the status quo, and that's why we have been able to solve these 220,000 deaths, which is an extremely recent statistic, and that's, again, one of the um, largest statistics in the round. We're going to collapse, or sorry, we're going to drop terrorism. Now, moving on to their case. So on the first point on incarceration, again, we mentioned how, uh, oh, right. So basically what we're trying to say is that we mentioned how this incarceration is not unique because the problem is getting better in the status quo. They mentioned how that's like a counterplan. That doesn't make any sense because it's happening in the status quo. We're not coming up with some plan. We're not Congress. We're, we're making back and we're trying to go back. Um, we're trying to implement, we're trying to prevent this uh, ban on uh, biotech, which is happening in the status quo, which is why there is no um, incarceration effect. And again, they mentioned how we don't have these like recent statistics. We actually do, which is why we mentioned how there hasn't really been in, like a severe effect in these, there hasn't been a severe effect in um, incarceration. Moving on to uh, deportation, we mentioned how, again, these deportations are happening. They're plummeting right now. They didn't respond to some more points, for example, how ICE uses other sources, which um, basically proves how there is no point of biotech. It's not explicitly, it's not their entire impact. Don't want to buy it on agriculture. Um, there's also the problem of misdistribution. They don't have a, like a valid response. All they say is like, okay, well, we're still solving the issue, but misdistribution is the number one main issue, and that's why these people aren't getting food, so there's no point in agriculture into um, their point on like construction. They didn't really extend that in rebuttal, so therefore it does not come through. Also, let's point authoritarianism. If anything, banning them from the U.S. will use biometric surveillance gives China and Russia a monopoly over surveillance, which would increase authoritarianism in two ways. First, more links between developing countries and authoritarian regimes. And two, B, there's no regulation around biometric surveillance because in the app world, um, or excuse me, because uh, this means we link to the impact because of global authoritarianism, which is in the aggression not seen in World War II, in a world worse um, than extinction. So we're trying to outweigh their own extinction impact per the very words of their constructive. It's literally perfectly clean up blow, easiest place to vote. Now back on the terror real quick. Um, so banning doesn't actually stop our old data from being captured, so therefore there's no solvency. So therefore we are proud to... We actually, no, no, no. So therefore we are way because we have this magnitude, we have 220,000 lives saved, 15,000 children. They, the only response that they have to this is okay, that's not enough. It is enough, that's why we're making these efforts to stop them and it's increasing the status quo. And they have no impact left because lots of their issues are not even related to biotech. For example, like I mentioned, uh, both points in, uh, both points in um, the deportations aren't even related to biotech. And their first point and their third point um, have other ways. So therefore we are proud to, or other methods, therefore we're proud to negate. Going to be extending and collapsing our contentions followed by frontlining and finally, uh, sorry, uh, frontlining, attacking their case and then weighing. And Tom will start my first word. Okay, let's begin the sanctions. We're going to be extending our first and second contention, uh, first uh, contention of, ma of mass incarceration. We told you that surveillance tech uh, turns people of color into second class citizens. Several 20 told you that uh, surveillance drives brutal policing. Uh, 160, uh, 176,000 Americans die as a result of racial segregation every year. Second is extinction. Uh, the peace is, is peace is upheld by social justice, and without it, it could begin World War III. Our second, our second contention of deportation. We tell you that ICE has already used biometrics to deport 70,000 people. This hurts agriculture. This creates conflict. Losing even part of the supply reduces the shortage, which is the primary driver of war and can create nuclear conflict. Second is food insecurity. We see that losing the undocumented workforce puts 166 million people into food insecurity. Uh, uh, 6.7 uh, million people died of diabetes in 2021. And then NYS finalizes that 697,000 uh, people died of heart disease in the United States every year. Uh, second is construction. CMS co confirms that 41% of the construction workforce was undocumented. Okay, now moving on to defending what they said. They said that the status quo is the best. A lot of their responses are uh, talking about how more biometrics will be more beneficial going against that framework that they set. Uh, in order to solve incarceration and deportation, you need a full ban, uh, a full ban, and this contradicts their framework. They say that uh, misdistribution is a big issue, but we would say that uh, there are bigger issues with a 50% drop. They don't give sources that their point of uh, misdistribution is even true in the end, and a 50% drop will only exacerbate that. Uh, 
now defending incarceration. Uh, all, all they say in summary is that incarceration is getting better, but that was from 2000 before biometrics were, were more widespread. You would prefer our evidence over that. On deportation, they say that it's already being solved. They fail to say why affirming is bad. It can still improve. They also say that biometrics are being used to treat immigrants uh, more humanely, but they don't say how. They also say that biometrics are not biased. Our sources say that they are biased, outdates them, because theirs is in 2005, ours is in uh, 2022. They say that ICE is helping all of these people, even if they are helping, that doesn't uh, help, sol they aren't solving deportation, which doesn't matter one step forward, two steps back, like my partner said in rebuttal. Then they Say that ICE will use other methods to deport people, but none of them are nearly uh, are, but none of them are more effective than biometrics, so they don't outweigh here at all. They say that the biggest problem with is with food is Mr. Uh, distribution, but uh, and we would say even if that's true, it's because right now we have immigrant workers. If we didn't, it would be very very bad, and the and the main root cause would go to the lack of immigrant workers. Now moving on to attacking their case on their first contention of human trafficking, they haven't actually uh, accomplished anything. The United States uh, has. Uh, has an estimated 199,000 incidents occurring naturally with human trafficking. They don't have any magnitude here because hundreds of thousands are still suffering. The practicality of biometrics in solving human trafficking can be called into question as they prey on the most vulnerable who don't have biometrics available. Realize that there is a lot of catching for human trafficking with facial recognition, meaning that we don't even know if we caught the right people. And moving on to their second condition of uh, medical error, healthcare error can be can be prevented in other ways if nurse doctors and residence members were trained adequate, adequately, that would stop it without the need of biometrics. This point is astonishingly non-unique. Assessment 22 identifies 10 ways that we can reduce medical error, not including my biometrics. There is no reason to affirm. They also don't respond to what Anthony read, uh, it, which is uh, why they don't tell you if biometrics uh, can expand to cover all hospitals. It doesn't necessarily mean they'll be implemented everywhere, only in a few hospitals. They don't respond to our, they drop their terrorist contention, so you can't uh, give them the one off of that, but they, they don't respond to our turn that it's putting 300,000 Afghan Afghanistani people at risk. Now moving on to Wang, on the most that they have is 115,000 from trafficking and they have 250,000 from healthcare. Those are the most people that they have harmed. We have 330 million protected from food insecurity when you're affirming the resolution, meaning that we win this debate. Okay, you guys ready for grand? Awesome. Yeah. Let me take first question. Well, you, you spoke first, so. Yeah, you have a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Um, cool. We'll start time now. If we are extinct, do you think that's probably like the worst case scenario for the round? Like it probably takes out the food security point. Well, I mean, you aren't linking to extinction anymore. You dropped terror. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. I'll talk about that in final. Do you have a question? Um Uh, okay, so uh, not of that on the head, but uh, can you agree that if if biometrics are only stopping fifteen thousand of the nearly two hundred thousand people uh, as victims of human trafficking every year, then there's likely going to be a more efficient solution than only saving fifteen thousand from human tra human trafficking every year in the United States? Yeah, I mean, I mean, definitely not. So if that's literally over ten percent of the trafficking we've stopped in a single year, like, that's a huge impact. Plus, if we're stopping seventeen thousand suspects of trafficking, that means you reduce the efficacy of their efforts in the long term. So even if there's a lot of cases of trafficking happening we're stopping the people making those cases happen which means in the long term that numbers goes down even more and more it's a scalar impact just because we don't solve an entire problem doesn't mean that like it's not a good thing to vote for okay that's not even yeah. you can ask a question okay a question griffin or should i ask one you can ask a question so on your point on let's go to let's see like okay deportation you mentioned how like okay on your agriculture point you're like okay well there might be misdistribution misdistribution but like immigrants are like solving that like, how is that happening because like if mr D mr tribution is the main problem how is that 15 percent of the workforce going to make any difference okay so okay distribution uh, is the main problem right now because we haven't deported 11 million undocumented workers okay so you're saying that that's guaranteed to cause a new like main issue of like food like um, yeah, yeah yeah okay so when do these people get deported <laughs> when do we deport 11 million people the time frame is right now. Heart is working right now. I don't know. Yeah, I literally like, just like, started. So I feel like not that. Have you like given me a single empirical example of someone being deported based on heart yet? Yeah. Do you want us to give you? I, we can send you the cards. Like you know, person, I guess it would be too late for me to respond, but um, I guess I guess if you did, that's cool. Um, do you guys have a question? Um, can you elaborate on your part talking about how? You said that biometrics are are used to treat immigrants more humanely, and then and that's like a turn on our case. Can you expand upon that a little bit? If like, that's you know, people more human. Oh yeah, I mean we didn't go for that in summary, but the idea is that if we like are already treating migrants poorly, and that's going to exist in either world, we would we would prefer the world in which biometrics increase accountability and force us to treat people somewhat better. Because but how do they do that? What did you say? But how do they do that? Oh yeah, it replaces detainment because they can just survey them instead of having to detain them. Detain them. Okay. Uh, you don't ask a question. Okay. How was your day? 
Uh, it was good. How was yours? But it was pretty good too. Yeah, I'm a little tired, very hungry at this point. I'm very, very tired and hungry right now. Yeah, I guess. I'm really ready to go get a snack, but that'll That's happen. <laughs> What's your favorite color? Uh, blue. How about you? Same. Really? Yep. Yeah, I'm Royal actually a little bit colorblind, so uh, blue's a good one because I can see it well. Oh, uh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. We're out of prep. I'm going straight into final. It's going to start on the China turn on their C3, then go down their C1, C2, and then um, our argument of trafficking. Everybody good? Yep. Cool. Time will start now. It's game over when they can see the China turn. If anything, banning the U.S. from using biometric surveillance gives China and Russia a monopoly over the surveillance, which would increase authoritarianism in two ways. A, more links between developing countries and authoritarian regimes. B, no regulation around biometric surveillance means China can run free. We literally link into their impact of global authoritarianism, which is the aggression not seen since World War II in a world worse than extinction, so we outweigh their extinction impact and definitely the food insecurity impact for the very words of their constructive. It's perfectly clean in the flow, easiest place to vote. It was extended in summary. They haven't made a single response. You can literally pull the trigger right there if you don't want to resolve any of the other issues. But start on a car at the top, realize that we already told you that digital trails make police more accountable and reform easier, which is why ultimately we haven't seen a single person uh, incarcerated by biometrics. That's why they have no empirics. That's why our empirics about it being solved now still apply. Then on deportation, they say that like the other methods that ICE uses aren't effective, but that's not true. We literally had the same amount of deportations before we had biometrics. They didn't like prove an in, in increase in deportations. They just say there were 72,000. We told you only 400 of those were caused by biometrics, but even if there were, there are literally guidelines to prevent for us from deporting people who haven't committed any criminal convictions. But either way, we outweigh because we literally are stopping a world worse than extinction. I like this China turn is going to implicate on every single thing. It's a world worse than extinction. That means we can't solve for racial justice issues. We can't solve for deportation issues. Everything's over right there. If like there's always going to be other actors and always, always going to be like activist movements trying to solve both of those issues. But if we're all extinct, it doesn't happen. Okay, go to uh, it doesn't even matter if we're extinct. It's an authoritarian world, so it can't happen anyway. We would just prevent the activism from happening. Okay, go to our case. Um, are like the offense I'm extending is trafficking. UNICEF says the US is a hub for trafficking. Parker says biometrics are good at stopping traffickers because we prevent things like forging documents. 27% of trafficked victims are kids. So we have to continue collecting data in the future to increase their efficacy. Parker uh, impacts that out. So 15,000 kids already stopped, already saved by biometrics and 17,000 suspects stopped. That ultimately is a scalar impact since the more suspects we stop, the less trafficking there is in the future. They just say like our impact is too small. Like I said, it's scalar. I explained it in cross. And they say we're going to mis-ID people so it doesn't always work. They don't give you a single example of us mis-IDing someone and it failing. We told you we stopped 17,000 traffickers. None of those have been exonerated, meaning we still are solving an issue that is perpetuating across our society and affecting the most vulnerable group of people, which is children. Ultimately, super clean round based on the China turn. Um, vote next. <laughs> okay. Cool. So it's going to be our case, their case way. Everybody ready? Okay, cool. We went off mass incarceration. We told you that surveillance tech turns people of color into second-class citizens, allowing us to create predictive incarceration and take away the right to vote. Cyril 2020 surveillance drives brutal policing, prohibiting police access is required to defend back black lives in the 21st century. The impact was twofold. First, Prakash 2011 writes, if we each year, 176,000 Americans will die as a result of racial extinction. Marable finalizes peace between superpowers requires social justice without it. The ideological basis for World War III is set. They don't respond to it all, at all in final. Let's talk about responses they give to and it wasn't extended that well in summary. They say that incarceration is like getting better, but their evidence measures from since 2000. Biometrics weren't implemented until very recently. Next, they say that biometrics can reduce mass incarceration, but they won't. In the status quo, they aren't being solved because it's cyclical and it's getting worse. As we reach you in every speech, it's fed, it's making, it's being fed the people that it incarcerated, thus making it more racist because it sees the people incarcerated were minorities. So now let's attack their case. First, let's address the turn. If the U.S. stops exporting facial rec, then they will uh, spread democracy instead to balance it out. That's what our entire third contention was literally about. We read that to you. But even then, they do they, they already have a monopoly on biometrics, so it doesn't even matter. Noah did read that response in summary. That on trafficking. Remember, they have no solvency. They say that it's a scalar impact, but they concede what we read, which is that criminals mask their fingerprints and uh, they mask their face so victims are, and are hard to identify, meaning it won't get better. But next on medical error, realize you can solve without it. They can see it in final social security, no, uh, phone number, number, and it's all innate ways to identify. They can see it that it's non-unique. So we outweigh on magnitude because their impacts are 15,000 saved from trafficking and 250,000 deaths each year. But they don't respond in final to the extinction impacts from World War III. That outweighs the China authoritarianism turn they read because it outweighs it's worse to actually go extinct than to live in a techno-fascist regime. They just say that it's like worse than extinction, but at least you're living. That's probably living is like better than being dead. That's really that's really common sense. Next, we outweigh on uniqueness because their only quantifiable deaths impact is this medical error, which is really, really nebulous because there's other ways to solve medical error. Meanwhile, well, the only way, the only solvency you see for this racial segregation is by voting for the affirmative.
Good round, guys. Good round, guys. Thanks, Terrible. That was a really good round.